My name is Carrie, and this is Ray. Thank you for joining us today. We're both Pilates instructors here in Buda, Texas, and we're at Willow Garden Yoga Studio. We thought we would do a short little workout for anybody who's an avid runner. Um, quite often, runners, you know, they're taxing their body in a lot of ways, asking their body to do a lot. And sometimes what can happen is injuries, and that just means there's strength and weaknesses in the body, and that imbalance has caused some injury. So we just wanted to go through some Pilates exercises that would be fantastic to help you figure out what those strengths and weaknesses are and help you balance the body. So first of all, I just want to talk about that the feet are super important for um, the rest of the body health. So you want to take care of your feet. Uh, lots of times hamstrings and glutes might be weak or strong or one side stronger than the other. Low back can be an issue and definitely the core. So those are kind of the things we're going to be focusing on today. So we're actually just going to get do a little bit of a warm up here. So I'm just going to have Ray get into a tabletop position or a quadruped position as it's often said in Pilates. Coming into this tabletop position, I just want you to find a neutral position for the pelvis and take in a nice deep breath in. And as you exhale, pulling that T-point in, that high point in the top of the ribs, just pulling the ribcage together and finding that connection with the core muscles, keeping the belly button pulled to the spine. From here, I want you to push the mat away finding that extension through the shoulders. Go ahead and open the knees up, shoulder width apart. No, knees will be under the hips actually. <laughs> and then the wrists, you wanna make sure the wrists are underneath the shoulders. So she's in a nice stable position here. Core is pulled in nice and tight. From here, we're just gonna go ahead and bring the right foot up towards the ceiling. Just finding that the hips can stay nice and even. We're gonna flex through that foot so the sole of the foot is facing the ceiling. And from here, you're gonna open that knee up to the side. So we're just gonna rotate nice and slowly through that hip. Just nice and easy around, just opening up the hips here. Using that breath to keep the navel pulled into the spine. And one more time in this direction. And when you get down to the bottom, just go ahead and reverse it and go the other way. Perfect, keep using that breath. Flies, we talk a lot about the ha breath. It helps you engage the deep core muscles. And one more time around on this side, nice and slow. And then stop at the bottom and go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. So bring the left leg up towards the ceiling, perfect. And then slowly bring the knee around to the front and just nice hip circles here. This will also help to open up the hips. Quite often runners will have really tight hips. So you wanna to try to work on getting that mobility back into the hips. And one more time this direction and then reverse. Perfect. And make sure you're still breathing, pulling in that core muscles. One more time in this direction and then stop at the bottom. Perfect. And then from here, just take a nice deep inhale. We're just gonna rotate through the shoulders a little bit. Just working through that mobility, warming up the body. So just rotate through the shoulders, going one direction a few times and then the other direction. And then maybe you want to do a couple of cat cows here. It helps to open up the low back, especially can be tight for runners. The low back, so doing some cat cows really helps to open everything up. And again, using that breath, really pulling the belly button up and in. Perfect. And one more time. And then coming back into that neutral position. Perfect. From here, you want to find that neutral position of the spine as you had it extended in, in the opposite direction. Find that nice place in the middle for activating the neutral spine here, those muscles, the little multiple muscles along the back. From here, we're going to go ahead and extend the right arm up so that it's even with the ear on that right side. Again, trying to pull in the belly button and then slowly start to bring the left leg up. So we want opposite arm and leg here. And just finding that extension, you want to think about finding the length here. So really extending that foot out one direction and the arm up the other. Neck is nice and long, no wrinkles in the back of the neck. Pulling that belly button and holding it here. Make sure that the left arm is pushing the mat away so you extend it through the shoulder. Excellent. And hold here. And then slowly bring everything back down to the mat. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. So the left arm is going to come up nice and even with the ear and then extend that right leg. Again, keeping the belly button in. Try to think about keeping the hips nice and level, which looks awesome here. Keep the belly button pulled in, using your breath, inhale. Exhale, let it go. Excellent, engagement of the core. Hold it here. Five, four, three, two, and one, and bring it down. Excellent. 
Now from here, just go ahead and open up the knees about mat distance apart. So if you can bring your toes together, and you're going to slowly push back and try to open up through the hips. You can walk the hands forward. Coming into a child's pose here, this is an excellent position to help open up the hips. And just use your breath here. Inhale and exhale. Now if this is uncomfortable for you, if it's hard on the knees, um, sometimes if you have knee pain, you can always put a block or a pillow underneath your sits bones. Or you can put a pillow underneath your chest, sometimes that helps. Or even putting a, a towel or something between the knees, sometimes that can help. So one more round of breath here, inhale and exhale. And then slowly start to drag the hands towards the body, pulling the belly button in as you start to restuff the vertebrae. Slowly coming up, the head is going to be the last thing to come up. Sitting up nice and tall, you can bring the knees together and just walk yourself forward. We're going to come down into our forearms and hands can be clasped together. You want to make sure that the elbow is underneath the shoulders and then slowly let the legs come back down behind. So you're going to be kind of on your belly here. We're going to tuck the toes under, keeping the knees um, placed on the mat for now. So try to think about pushing the mat away from you, really extending, getting that distance between the ears and the shoulders. So really pushing the mat away. We don't want to be into our shoulders like this. Push it away. From here, we're going to tuck the toes and see if we can bring the knees up and start to pull that belly button in. So think about no sagging. You don't want to have the hips down and um, having that pain in the low back. So you want to push the hips up towards the ceiling, really pulling that belly button in. So using that paw breath again here. Now at any point if this becomes too much, you can always drop the knees down and take a break or just hold here in this position. This is a modified plank position. Otherwise, you're going to go ahead and extend and push everything up. Hold here. Take a nice deep breath in. And exhale. On the next round of breath, we're going to hold this position as we push through our toes and we're going to try to send our nose over our hands. So really extending through those toes, which is excellent for the feet. And then coming back into our starting position again, using that breath. Inhale, come forward. Hold it here. Exhale. Bring it back. And inhale, come forward. And exhale, bring it back. We're going to do two more like this. Inhale, forward, exhale, back. And one more. Inhale, forward. And exhale, come back. Come back down to the knees. And from here, you can push back into a child's pose again. You, again, want to try to find that hip opener. Open the knees up nice and wide. Or if you have the knees closer together, it helps to do a little bit more opening for the low back. So whatever feels good here, take a nice inhale. And exhale. And one more inhale. And exhale. Perfect. Let's walk ourselves back out into that low plank position. So you're going to come back onto the forearms. Again, clasping the hands together, making sure that the elbows are underneath the shoulders. You can be down on the knees until you find your position. Then from there, we're going to push up. Again, trying to pull the knees up. And from here, you're just going to drop the right knee down to the mat and then back up, and then the left one, and then back up, and then both knees down, and back up, and we're gonna repeat this. Right knee down, up, left down, both. We're just gonna work through this a few more times here. Keep using your breath, keep breathing, inhale, exhale, using that hot breath to help. Keep drawing in those core muscles. And one more round. And left knee, and then both knees, perfect. Go ahead and set both knees down, and push back into child's pose one more time. From here, this time, let's walk the hands over to the right. Just feel that stretch through the side body. Kind of think about really dropping that left armpit down into the mat, so you're really feeling that stretch through the side. One more round of breath here, inhale. And exhale. And then walk the hands through center. And then over to the left side. And again, think about really trying to drop those armpits down towards the mat, really pulling that right armpit down, especially feeling that stretch through the right side body. And one more round of breath. Inhale. And exhale. Excellent. Go ahead and come back through center. And again, you're going to drag the hands nice and slow towards the body. You're pulling the belly button in and bring yourself back up to a sitting position. 
Now go ahead and walk yourself forward. We're going to come back into that low plank position. We're going to hold it here just for a moment. So find your position. Really try to pull that belly button up and in. And this time we're going to let the hands go. We're going to open up the hands. We're going to swivel our right hand towards our left inside of our elbow. And then we're going to let that left arm come up. So we're going to push yourself onto our side. So you're going to come into a side plank. So our feet are actually overlapping. So my left foot is in, is in front of my right. We're into a side plank position. You want to have that left elbow underneath, I'm sorry, the elbow underneath the shoulder. You want to hold this position and the hand can come up here. And now from here, we're just going to slowly let that hip come down just a little touch and then push back up. And let it drop down and push back up. And do that a couple more times. If it feels better for you to have the feet stacked on top of each other, you can try that. If it becomes too much doing this exercise, you can always drop to one knee as well. So whatever feels good. Now go ahead and <clears throat> come to the other side. And rotate yourself. Perfect. And we'll do five hip dips on this side. So again, if it becomes too much, you can always drop your knee down and just stay in this position and still working through that oblique muscle. So essential for a runner to work on those strong oblique muscles. And once you come to five, you're going to bring yourself back through center. Take a nice breath here. Inhale and exhale. And from here, see if you can push yourself up onto your hands. So again, really using those core muscles, using that breath. See so if you can hold on to this full plank position, using the breath here to keep that core engagement. You can open the feet up a little bit wider. And from here, we're going to use that core muscle to help us lift up our right foot. So see if you can find that balance. So again, sometimes it helps if the feet are extended a little bit, and then bring it down. And then let's bring the left one up, using that breath to keep those core muscles engaged and back down. Now we're going to bring the right leg up and we're going to pulse it for five, four, three, two, one, and then back down. And then the left leg up. One, two, three, four, five, and bring it down. Now hold this plank position, hold here. This time you're going to go ahead and bring the right leg up and hold it, point the toe, flex, point, and flex. One more time, and then bring it down. And then the left leg, same thing, up, point, flex, point, flex, point, and flex, and bring it down. Excellent. Go ahead and bring your knees in, and go ahead and push back into a child's pose one more time and take a breath. Excellent work. Inhale, and exhale, and just take that break, take that breather. And one more time, inhale, and exhale. And go ahead and push yourself up into that tabletop or quadruped position. Find that stable position. We're going to take our right hand. We're just going to reach it up towards the ceiling. Just feel that opening through that chest. Feel the stretch. And then go ahead and thread the needle. You're going to bring it through. Let it slide along the floor. And just bring that shoulder down towards the mat. And just feel that stretch. And from here, you can keep the, the arm extended long. Or if you're feeling like you need a little bit more stretch for the upper part of the back, you can bring that hand closer to the body and then push into the mat. See if you can get those shoulders to stack. It's a really good stretch and it helps to open up the upper back if your upper back is tight. Perfect. So go ahead and take an inhale as you bring yourself back to that starting position. So you're going to unthread the needle. Push yourself up. Extend that arm high. Excellent. And bring it down. Let's try it on the other side. And just lifting up, feeling that stretch, that opening through the chest, really trying to pull that arm up towards the ceiling. Now go ahead and thread it through and come down onto that shoulder. Just feel that stretch there again. You can extend the right arm long if that feels good or if you're feeling like you need that opening through the upper back, you can just press your hand in close to your face and push the shoulders so they stack. Take a breath here, inhale. And exhale, and slowly unthread the needle, coming back into that tabletop position, coming back through that stretch, and then bringing that hand back down. From here, we're just going to walk our knees forward. 
we're just going to sit back on our heels. So if this is an uncomfortable position for you, again, you can put a pillow or a block underneath your sits bones. The, he the feet are so important for a runner especially to be healthy because if your feet are not healthy and they're sore, that radiates all the way up and give you knee pain, back pain, everything all the way up. So we want our feet to be healthy. So again, we want to try to stretch out the ankles a little bit. We're working on our feet. From here, we're just going to come forward. We're going to tuck our toes. And then we're going to see if we can sit back onto our heels. Again, this can be pretty intense, especially if this is something new you've never really done before. You haven't opened up your feet in this way before. It can be really, really intense. So just ease into it. You can always come back off, give your feet a little bit of a break, and then see if you can sit back again. So you want to try to hold this for at least 30 seconds. So good for the feet, opening up through the toes, just stretches the bottom of the feet. And again, just trying to be conscientious about keeping your feet nice and healthy. Take a nice deep breath here, inhale, and exhale. And go ahead and sit forward. You can just sort of tap your feet out, let them have a chance to get back into a normal feel here. Excellent. And we're gonna come down onto our hip and we're gonna swing our feet around. And from here, I'm actually going to give Ray um, a ball. If you don't have a ball at home, you can use a pillow or roll up a towel and put it between your knees. But she's gonna go ahead and bend her knees and put the ball between her knees. This will help to start the engagement of the inner thighs. So we want you to give it a nice good squeeze as you're holding it there. You're gonna bring your hands out in front. Use your inhale. Exhale, sitting up nice and tall. Pulling in that T point, you're going to slowly start to rock back into a nice C shape with the spine, holding that belly button in, and then bring ourselves back up. Nice inhale, sit up nice and tall, stacking that vertebrae. Exhale. See if you can come back a little bit farther, holding that belly button in, and then slowly come back up. And then one more time, see if you can come back a little bit further, holding it here. We're going to work on some oblique muscle exercises here. Again, so good for a runner. We're going to open up that right hand, let it drop down beside us, and then bring it back up. Use your breath. Inhale, exhale. So you can hold it, really feeling those side of the muscles working. Come back through center. And one more time, open it up to the side. Come back through center. Excellent. And one more time, other side. Awesome. And back through center. Hold here. Take another deep inhale. Exhale, pull that T-bone in and slowly bring yourself back down to the mat, all the way down one vertebrae at a time. Excellent. Now you're going to bring your hands down by the hips. Make sure you're opening up the collarbones, letting those shoulder blades come nice and flat on the mat. Extending through the neck, maybe nod your chin a little bit. Again, we want to bring the feet up a little bit closer to the six bones, about a foot away, and start to give that ball a nice good squeeze so you're really starting to activate those inner thighs, working on our inner thighs and our outer thighs, adductors and adductors. So from here, I want you to think about pulling your T-point in and dropping your tailbone into the mat, finding your neutral spine. So a little bit of space under the low back. So it's like you're sitting back in a chair, like you're pushing your tailbone into the back of the chair. That's the feeling you want. So nice and heavy into the mat, using your breath here. So we're gonna push into the pads of our feet and we're gonna push into our palms, getting the activation of the back of the arms and you're going to hold that neutral spine as you just lift the hips up. So it's like a drawbridge coming up. The body, the hips lift up, so you're a nice straight line between the knee, hip, and the shoulder. Think about keeping that T-point pulled in, belly button to spine, keeping that neutral space under the low back. Holding it here, pressing the hands, arms are activated. Use your breath. Inhale. Exhale. And then slowly bring the body down like a board coming down. So the tailbone should be the thing that touches. Perfect. Take a breath here. Inhale. And exhale. Again, pressing into our hands, pressing into our feet, and lifting like a board. Keeping that neutral spine. Holding onto it. Squeezing through those hamstrings and glutes. Pressing the feet into the mat. Holding it here. Now give the ball a good squeeze for five, four, Three, two, one, and hold that squeeze in, hold it there. Now let the hips come down just a couple inches, and then back up, squeeze it up, squeeze it back up, perfect. Let it drop down a couple of inches, and push back up, excellent. Okay, three more, squeeze it back up, and two, 
and back up. And one more. And squeeze it up there. Really feel the back of the legs working here. And then slowly as you bring the drawbridge down, remember the tailbone should be the thing that touches, not the low back. Nice and slow. Excellent. Good job. Keeping the ball where it is or a towel or whatever you have there, go ahead and bring the knees towards the chest. And just give yourself a little massage for the low back. Maybe you rock back and forth on the low back a little bit. Just, just take that little break. And we have one more exercise here for the hips and the glute muscles. So good for runners to keep that strength there. So go ahead and bring the feet back down to the mat. Coming back into that hook line position. Again, finding that nice long arm. Shoulders are open. Neck is long. Pulling the T-point in. This time we're going to come into an imprint position. So you want all the vertebrae to be nice and flat on the mat. So it's actually a pelvic tilt. So before we had the tailbone sticking down, this time we're going to scoop it under. So it's actually a pelvic tilt, so the back can be nice and flat on the mat. So finding that pelvic tilt, you'll find already that the back of the legs and the glute muscles are working. So again, keep squeezing that ball, using your breath here. Take a nice deep inhale, and as you exhale, pull your left. The T-point is you lift the hips, and it's sort of a, a peeling of the vertebrae off the mat. Now hold it up there, keep squeezing the ball. See if you can keep that tension on the ball. And now see if you can press into the left foot and lift the right foot off of the mat. Nice extension of the leg, excellent there. Keep holding, keep pushing the hip up, really good. And then slowly bring that right leg back down and try it on the other side, the left leg comes up, excellent. Keep pulling that belly button to spine, keep tucking that tailbone towards the ceiling the best you can. Excellent, and bring that leg down, and then slowly, starting with your T-point, then the mid-back, low back, and then finally the tailbone. You can go ahead and let that tailbone relax into the back, sending it back into the mat, finding that neutral spine for a little break. Use your breath. Excellent. So one more time, coming into that imprint position, squeezing everything, using that breath. On that exhale, go ahead and peel the vertebrae off, Sending those hips up. Excellent. Hold it there. Go ahead and extend the right leg one more time. We did before. And now you're just going to roll the leg down. So if you have a towel or something, hopefully this will work okay for you. And then back up. And one more time. Down and up. And once more. Excellent. And hold there. Keep squeezing. Push the hip up. Excellent. And then go ahead and place the foot back down. And we'll do this on the other side. Left leg comes up. Finding that extension and then just rolling the leg down just a couple of inches and back up and down. We're just doing three of these. So one more here. Keep squeezing, keep pushing that hip up. Excellent. And bring that foot down. And then slowly, starting with the T point coming back down to the mat. Each vertebrae follows. Finally, the tailbone can rock down into the mat and just find that moment there for a little break. You can bring the knees in, whatever feels good. Using your breath here. Inhale and exhale. Excellent job. Go ahead and remove the ball. We'll just set that to the side or your towel, or your pillow, whatever you were using. And we're actually going to come onto our side. So I'm just going to have Ray come on her side here. We're going to grab a block and we're going to do some side work. Is this um, I guess this is it. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. So if you want to have a block or a pillow or something under your head, whatever's comfortable for you, we're just going to do some side leg work here. So important for that high glute knee muscle. Again, an important muscle for all of us just for balancing the body, but it's so essential for a runner to have that strength through the glute muscles. So in this position, you want to be able to um, get those hips to stack. So right now, her right hip is actually going more towards the mat. So we want her to be able to stack it. And to do that, she needs to lift up using her oblique muscle on the side that's touching the mat. She needs to pull that up, pushing that hip away from the armpit. And then we're going to extend the legs nice and long, and the toes coming towards the front of the mat. So she's kind of in a little bit of a banana shape here. Pulling up under that side, finding that space underneath that oblique muscle there. So she's not only working her oblique muscle, she's going to be working this high glute weed muscle on this side. So holding on to that, pulling in the T-point, again, using those core muscles to keep everything nice and tight. She's going to go ahead and flex both feet, 
and just bring that right foot up to a hover. Hold it here. So just hovering like this and keeping this oblique muscle pulled in nice and tight, she should be able to already start to feel this high glute med muscle strength, glute medius muscle strength work here. So hold that, hover there. She's flexing through the foot, again, engaging the muscles in the leg. Now from here, I want you to go ahead and point the toes, and we're just going to do some little circles here. Start small. You want to be able to control this. You don't want to be rocking on your hips. So you want to just little circles to start with, and then if you feel like you have good control, you can go a little bit bigger. We're going to do this for five, four, three, keep breathing, two, and one, and hold there. And then we're going to reverse again, start small, making sure you have good control, that you're not rocking on your hips. Keep pulling up that side. And we just have five, four, three, two, and one. Go ahead and flex that foot and just bring it down. And then back up and down. You don't even have to touch. You can keep it to a hover and back up and down and back up. Keep breathing here. We've got five, four, keep pulling up that side, keep pulling the T-point in, and two more, and the last one, good job, you can go ahead and set that foot down, Whew, and if you need to massage that hip a little bit, give it a little chopping massage action, just to try to get it to relax a little bit, excellent work. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to pull the knees up into a 90 degree position. So she's going to bring her knees to 90, so that gives her 90 degrees between the legs here and with the body. So again, you want to still find that position where you can pull the oblique muscles in nice and tight, getting that little bit of a lift off the mat, and that helps to stack the hips in this direction here. So go ahead and flex through both feet. Perfect. And go ahead and bring that top leg up again into a hover. So from here, you want to find that position where you can keep the legs in a parallel position. You want them to be like railroad tracks. So just drop your heel a little bit, right? Perfect. So now her legs are in a perfect alignment, a nice parallel position. And just this alone, again, is working this high glute medius muscle. Are you feeling it burn? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So holding it here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so trying to think about keeping the knees nice and even, she's just going to extend the right leg, that top leg up nice and long, really squeezing through that quad muscle as she pulls that leg forward and then back in into that bent position. Again, trying to keep the knees nice and even. So extend. We're going to do this for four more times. And back in. And three, extend. And back in. And two. And back in. And one more, extend. Squeeze it out there. Hold it there for five little pulses. For five, four, three, two, one. Excellent. Bring it back in and set it down. And then just bring that knee in towards the chest. If that feels good or open up through the hip, whatever feels good to give it a chance to just relax. Got one more exercise on this side before we move on. So still staying in that 90 degree position. You see she popped up her oblique, using the oblique muscles, popped up her side there, getting the hips nice and stacked. So go ahead and find that hover position again, making sure both feet are flexed. Again, just trying to get into this high muscle right here of the glute muscles. Squeezing here. From now, you're going to bring the knee in towards the chest. Squeezing it in as close to the chest as you can. And then you're going to push like you're pushing something heavy. Push that foot away from you, extending the leg nice and long. So it's going to come out this way. Coming out long this way. Yeah. So you're going to bring the knee in nice and tight and then extending that leg out. Like you're pushing something heavy away from you. That's excellent. One more time back in. So squeezing it in and then pushing like you're pushing a heavy rock away from you. Again, one more time in. And back out. And in. And really push with that heel, extend that heel away. And one more time in. Good job, and extend, push it away. Excellent. And go ahead and bring that knee in and hold and give yourself a stretch here. Again, you can open up that knee if that feels best. Whatever feels good, a little bit of rotation work maybe. Whatever feels good, sometimes just dropping the knee in front and then just kind of massaging that muscle will help get it to release. Good job. And from here, we're gonna go ahead and push ourselves up and turn ourselves around. 
and come to the other side. So again, find that alignment. Sometimes using the back of the mat helps if you're not sure if, you're, if your shoulder and your hip is in good alignment, so you can use the back of the mat to do that if that helps. Again, just finding that banana shape. You can place a block or a pillow underneath the head if that feels best, or you can just extend the arm long, whatever feels good. Again, trying to pull up, using those oblique muscles, really squeezing, like if somebody was poking you in the ribs, pulling those ribs in to pull those oblique muscles in, getting that lift, and that helps to stack the hips nice and evenly here. Go ahead and flex through both feet, getting to that activation of the leg muscles, and go ahead and bring that top leg up to a hover, just holding it here, pulling the T-point in, using your breath, remember to breathe. The other hand can just be in front for support, like she's got it there. Use your breath. Hold that extension, really pushing that heel away from you, finding that extension through the leg. Thinking about getting that hip to pull away from the armpit, keeping the hips nice and stacked. She looks awesome here. Holding that there, using your breath. Now go ahead and point the toe, and we're just gonna do some little circles here. Starting small, small circles to start, making sure that your balance and stability is good. If that feels pretty strong, then you can go ahead and make the circles a little bit bigger. Just trying to work on that again, that stability, keeping those oblique muscles pulled in, keeping that um, side off of the mat as best you can. We want eight circles on this side, so I think we're maybe at four more. <laughs> Three, two, and one more this direction, and stop and go ahead and reverse. Again, starting small, making sure you have good stability, you're not rocking on your hips. And then once you feel that, you can go ahead and make them a little bit bigger if that feels good. We've got four, three, two, and the last one. And go ahead and flex that foot and bring it back to that starting position, keeping that hover. We're working on that muscle, so keep that hover. And then we're just gonna bring the heel down. You can touch or almost do a touch and then lift the leg back up and bring it down to a little touch and back up. Good job. We've got three more. And down to the hover and back up. Two more, and then the last one coming up, really good. And then bring it down and go ahead and bring that knee in if you need a little bit of a stretch or a little bit of a break. Sometimes going on to the second side after you've already done the other side, the second side hurts a lot quicker. <laughs> I think because you've got that tension you know, on that bottom leg. So whatever feels good, whatever you need there. And then go ahead and bring the legs up into a 90 degree position. Excellent. Again, lifting up with those oblique muscles, really pulling in the core muscles to help you keep that pulled up so you're having that little space under the side there. Go ahead and flex through both feet. Excellent. Again, using your breath to pull the T-point in. Pulling that right leg up to a hover, we want to find that parallel position. So you want to have a nice, even parallel position between the knees and the ankles. She looks really good here, holding it here. Making sure you're flexing through both feet. Gets that tension, it gets the muscles working. Probably already feeling burning again in that top high glute medius muscle. Really good. Now thinking about keeping the knees nice and even, you're gonna go ahead and extend that heel forward. Really pushing that foot forward, squeezing through those quad muscles, and then coming back to that start position. And then extending forward. Again, you're really trying to push that heel forward, finding your own resistance here. Push the heel forward. Thinking about keeping the knees in a nice, even position, extending that foot forward. We just have two more here like that. And then the last one, push that heel forward, hold it up there for five little pulses. Five, four, three, two, and the last one, bring it in. Good job. And if you need a little break here, excellent work. That's really hard on that muscle, but so good for that strengthening. And sometimes you'll find one side is a lot easier than the other. That's totally normal. Everybody has one stronger side and one weaker side. That's completely normal. Go ahead and flex the feet. We just have our last exercise here. Go ahead and find that hover. So find that parallel position again. This time we're going to be drawing the knee in towards the chest and then extending, pushing that leg nice and long, pulling the knee in. So again, we're using our core muscles to pull that knee in. Use your breath, and then as you extend that leg, really think about pushing that heel away from you, finding that heel has all of the energy, and bring that knee in, 
And this is going to be the last one. Bring that knee in and then find that extension. Really push that heel. Excellent. And then go ahead and bring that knee in. This is the last one. You can bring the knee in and relax. So again, whatever feels good. If you want to do some hip rotations here, whatever feels good for you. Sometimes just dropping that knee. Excellent. You go ahead and push the block to the side. Get rid of your pillow. And we're just going to come to the back and do some stretches for our hips. So go ahead and we're going to come into a figure four. So it's just taking one leg and bringing the heel over top of the opposite knee. And from here, you're just going to take your hand and press into that knee, pushing the knee away from you. And you should feel some release through the hips. And use your breath here again to just breathe into it, help you relax into it. Try not to hold any tension in your jaw, because tension in the jaw relates to tension in the hips. So you want to release all that. And from here, we're just going to go ahead and we can pull that leg up towards the ceiling. So you can either extend the leg or keep it bent, whatever feels good. And then just keep that tension, pushing that knee away, either with your elbow or your hand, whatever feels good. And just find that release through the hips. And breathe into it here. And one more round of breath, and we'll go to the other side. So go ahead and reverse yourself out of that, and yeah, perfect. Find that figure four, pressing that knee away, just first releasing that tension, breathe into it, and exhale. And then go ahead and bring that leg up towards the ceiling. Again, you can keep the leg bent or extend it, whatever feels best for you. Just finding that stretch and that release through the hips. And then go ahead and release back down the mat. From here, we're just going to grab, we have one of these bands. If you don't have a band at home, you can grab a t-shirt, a towel, um, a long sleeve shirt, whatever works best for you. And we're just going to place it underneath the sole of our foot. So we decide which leg she's starting with her right, which is perfectly fine. So from here, actually try to see if you can open up the band a little bit more so you can kind of wrap it under the um, sole a little, a little bit more. Perfect. So just start to pull on it, give yourself a little bit of tension. And from here, you can keep this leg bent like this or long, whatever feels good for you. If you have tight hamstrings, maybe this is a more comfortable position. Go ahead and flex through the foot that's up towards the ceiling there and start to pull the toes towards the head. So we're just trying to get first a little bit of an opening through the hamstring. A little stretch here. Again, if you have a little bend in the knee, maybe that's more comfortable for you if you're super tight for the hamstrings. Whatever feels good, just breathe into it here. Inhale and exhale. Now we're going to do a little bit of work for the calf muscle, and actually this is great for the feet. So she's got it opened up nice and um, wide on the foot, and then you're just going to press your toes into it. So pressing the toes towards the ceiling, and then releasing and then coming to a point with the toes, and then releasing. So you should feel that the calves are starting to work, but it's actually great for the feet as well. Just working on mobility through the foot, through the ankle, working our calf muscle, and we're opening up through the hamstrings. Just a couple more like that. Three, and two, and one more, pointing up, and then coming back into that flex position. And from here, we're just going to work on the leg rotation. So you want to think about rotating from the hip with that leg so that the toes are going to come in towards the body. So keeping the leg where it is, we're just rotating through the leg. So this leg is like this, we're just rotating through the leg. And then pulling that leg towards the head. So you're going to find a little bit more opening maybe through the back of the leg, maybe a little bit more into the IT bound on the side. So again, just a rotation of the leg within the socket. And then we're going to go ahead and rotate the leg the other way. So now the toes are essentially pointing away from us. So again, it's just a rotation of that leg in the hip joint. So again, from here, if you want to extend that leg long, the opposite leg long, that feels better, whatever feels good. And then bring it back. Let's go ahead and switch feet. So you can just open up and then switch feet. Perfect. So we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to start with a little bit of a hamstring stretch. So again, flexing that foot really helps to open up the back of the leg and then bring the toes towards the face. A little bend in the knee if you need it is perfect. 
River feels good for you. Just hold it there, breathe into it, don't forget to breathe. Inhale, exhale. Excellent. One more round of breath. Perfect. Now we're going to go ahead and bring the foot more towards the ceiling, so we're more um, 90 degrees towards the ceiling there. And we're just going to go ahead and point and flex. So have some good tension on the band. So you're really getting that work through the calf muscle. Again, feeling that stretch through the hamstring. But then you're also getting some work for the foot. Perfect. One, two, five, four, three, two, and one more. Excellent. Go ahead and keep that foot nice and flexed. From here, you're just going to do that rotation of the leg within the socket, sending the toes towards more towards the inside of the body and just feeling the stretch. Hopefully, you're feeling it a little bit more on the outside. You feel a difference? Yeah. It's a great opening for anybody who runs a lot. Your legs can get really tired and tight. Now go ahead and rotate the leg the other way. Perfect. Toes come away from the body. Again, keeping that flexion in the foot really helps to find that stretch and that opening in those muscles. Excellent work. And then bring the foot back to parallel. You go ahead and release the band. From here, we're going to work on some core muscles as we roll ourselves up. So you're going to extend the feet nice and long and bring the hands back behind the head and just take that great good morning stretch there using the breath. Nice stretch, opening up through the rib cage. And now from here, I want you to think about using your breath, using those that hot breath to help you engage the, the T point and finding that connection with the core muscles. We're going to slowly bring ourselves up. So using the breath, try to flex to the great feet. Think about really pulling the inner thighs together. Use your breath as you inhale. Start to curl the head and shoulders up, arms come with the ears. Now just take a look at the feet. Now start to drop the hands down towards the feet. Take another inhale. As you exhale, so you can curl up a little bit more, bringing the top of the back up off the mat. Use your breath. Inhale. Exhale. Pull yourself up. Use that ha breath. Inhale. A little bit more. And one more time. And bring yourself up to a full seated position. Excellent. Really good. From here, we're going to open up the feet nice and wide on our mat. You want to think about really plugging those sits bones into the mat. We're keeping that flexion in the feet so our legs are engaged. Plugging our sits bones in. We want to sit up nice and tall, shoulders nice and wide, pulling our T-point in, pulling the belly button in, sitting up nice and tall. From here, Grace is going to open up her arms. And we want to make sure that she can see her hands in her periphery. So they're not way back here. You want to see them in your periphery. Starting to get some tension in the arms, so she's starting to work through the triceps. Using the breath here, inhale, you're going to sit up nice and tall, finding that extension through the spine, opening up the vertebrae. And then as you exhale, you're going to make that twist. Excellent. And then come back through center. You're going to inhale, find that length through the spine, and then twist. So from here, you want to make sure that your heels are staying in place. Go ahead and come back through center. And that they're not shifting. If they're shifting, that means your hips are shifting. So keep that tension in the legs. Inhale, lengthen. Twist. Excellent. And one more time, come back through center. Inhale, lengthen, find that twist. So really working through those oblique muscles. And let's do that one more time on the right. Excellent. Come back through center. Excellent. Over to the other side. Really good. And stop in the center. And then just bring the hands down and bring the feet back in. And just shake the legs out a little bit, give them a little bit of a break. We're going to do that roll down this time again, using those core muscles using our breath here, sitting up nice and tall. Make sure the shoulders are down away from the ears. Quite often we bring them up here, so we want to bring them down. Use your breath here. Flex through the feet. Inhale. Lengthen through the spine. Use that ha breath to pull the T-point in, starting to engage the core muscles. One more time. Inhale. Exhale. Slowly come back down. Let's see if we can go down to a count of six, five. Keep breathing. Four, three, Two and one. Slowly bring the arms back behind. Then we're going to do our roll up. Use your breath. Inhale. Exhale. Start to curl the head and shoulders up. Arms come up the ears. Slowly bring them down towards the feet. Use your breath. Bring yourself up off. Try to really squeeze through those inner thighs. 
Let's use our breath here for six, five, four, slowly bring yourself up, three, two, and one. You can hold there. Sitting up nice and tall. Go ahead and open up the arms and the legs. We're going to do that spine twist one more time. Using that inhale, she lengthens through the spine, and then she twists. Really good. And then comes to the other side. Excellent. Her legs aren't shifting. That means her hip bones are, or her sits bones are plugged into the mat. She's got tension in her legs because her feet are flexed. Excellent. And we'll go one more time to the right. And then come back one more time to the left. Really good. Awesome. And go ahead and just come back through center. Relax the arms and legs. Really good. And how are we on time, Ray? Probably good. Yeah? Okay. Well, thank you so much for joining us here. We're just going to come to a nice seated position. From here, you can do some breath work, maybe, you know, do some rotations of the neck through the shoulders. Just try to relax. Maybe a couple of twists would feel good at the end here. I don't want to keep you guys any longer. Thank you so much for joining us today. And thank you, Ray, for being my student. So, namaste. Have a great day.